Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing another video on fantasy world building and we're talking about technology. How far can you go with your technology before it becomes science fiction? What level of technology do you want to introduce? And what kinds of technology? If you look back through history of Earth, we have different ages, whether it's the Stone Age, Bronze Age, and so on. And this refers to what they were crafting tools and weapons from. I haven't seen a fantasy book with a Stone Age level of technology. Most fantasy books have steel weapons. This is just something that's quite common. There's no reason you couldn't have some kind of a Bronze Age thing. There are pros and cons, obviously. It means that the technology isn't nearly as advanced. The society isn't nearly as advanced and their understanding of how it works, therefore, is a bit limited compared to what we'd look at today. So moving the story slightly closer to something that's more familiar to people can make it a little bit easier to understand, but there's no reason you couldn't have something that's set a bit more basic in terms of a technology level. Moving away from weapons, let's look at something else. How about books? In fantasy books, you often have scribes, people's writing messages, and then some kind of transport system, perhaps, for getting messages around. But then you think about books. Are they all being handwritten? Why can't there be some level of technology where they've invented the printing press? Have they moved technology onto that level? The mechanization has taken place. Joe Abercrombie's new series at the moment, The Age of Madness, set within the first law world, the society is going through an industrial revolution. There are factories producing huge amounts of technology and weapons and cannons on a scale that the world has never seen before. There are printing presses producing flyers and books. That level of technology has an enormous impact on society. In his book and in other books with that level of technology, you have different tiers of society. There's the rich who are making lots of money by exploiting the poor, paying them poor wages, poor living conditions to produce the stuff in huge numbers that they then sell on for enormous amounts of profit. With Industrial Revolution, of course, there's an impact on society, where there's the food, there's the environment, mudging the waters, poisoning the water systems, all of this kind of stuff that feeds into it, things that we wouldn't do now, we can look back at our history and say, oh, that's disgusting, you know, poison the lakes and the rivers that went pouring sewage raw into the sea and that sort of stuff, you're not even treating it. But within a fantasy world, they wouldn't understand that level of stuff. So why wouldn't they do it? Then you move forward into warfare and you think about what level of technology do they have? Do they have cannons or is it something a bit more basic? Do they have huge catapults and trebuchets and siege engines for that sort of stuff. I've talked about architecture and cities in a previous video, but equally, what are they building their towns and cities from? What level of defence do they have? Is it just wooden palisades? Do they understand quarrying stone? Do they have massive walls to defend their cities? And therefore, if you're trying to lay siege to that city, what kind of technologies does the opposing force have to try and get inside? Another sub-section of the fantasy genre is sometimes referred to as flintlock fantasy. This could be the books of Brian McClellan or Adrian Tchaikovsky with his Guns of the Dawn. And this is people who have the basic understanding of things like muskets and rifles and gunpowder. Maybe they've moved on to cannons as well, maybe they haven't. But there are still people with swords and shields, but now you have projectile weapons that are better than a basic bow and arrow, that are more dangerous and more lethal over long distances. This is another area that few people have dabbled with and done some great series in. The next thing to think about is where does magic sit within this world that you've created in terms of technology. How developed is the technology? Is it basic swords and shields and steel weapons? Is it something more primitive? Have you advanced to some kind of technology that's with flint locks and cannons and siege engines? And with, against all that, if there is magic in your world, how does it hold up? How does it compare? Is it an opposing force? Does it work in parallel with it? As I mentioned, the Brian McClellan novels, he has magic within that world where it works in parallel. Some people combine technology with magic and it has unique and interesting effects, which I won't spoil, but he's done something a bit different that I hadn't seen before. 
Another way to look at it is the Shadows of the Apt series, which is a 10 book series by Adrian Tchaikovsky. Now he has some technology and some basic flying machines that are quite primitive, but he also has racial magic systems. This is where every race has an inherent ability or talent that gives them something unique. And all of the races within this world, it isn't a spoiler, it's part of the basic setup, is based upon a particular insect. They're called the Kinden. So for example, there are the beetles. These are very industrial. They're all humanoid looking people. The beetle Kinden are very industrious. They're very good at technology. They're very good at working out things and putting things together and building basic machines. Then you have the mantis kinden. These are people who are great warriors. They have kind of bony spurs that come out of their forearms, which is another level of technology that's inherent to them. There's the ant kinden, who, as you would expect, live in these huge kind of groups. However, they have essentially what is a hive mind and they can communicate telepathically with each other. And you can't replicate that in most fantasy worlds with basic technology. It borders on the supernatural or the fantastical in nature. And that's a kind of a technology that if you're starting down the normal industrial revolution level, you'd never have thought of because it doesn't follow the kind of basic tracks. So where the technology blurs, how it fits together with magic within your fantasy world, are the opposing forces? Do they work together? Is one rising and the other falling? What's happening within your world? And then think about all of the knock-on effects of that on society. History books are filled with examples of societies changing as new technologies are brought in. Some people are kicking and screaming and don't want it and reject it. Some go along with it willingly. This creates conflict, civils, wars, all sorts of problems. And you can look at history books for some great ideas and great examples. As I mentioned in the Joe Abercrombie books, he has magic within his fantasy worlds. That's not a spoiler. But suddenly you've got the power of industrialization for warfare. So wh what happens then? What happens to the people? And what's the use of magic if you suddenly can produce cannons that can kill people from much further away in greater numbers? How does that change warfare? How does that change society? What does it mean? Where do they go from there? Some great questions and great ideas to raise that he's based, you know, very loosely on other things that we've seen in the past, but it's completely set within his own fantasy world and he's taking it in his own direction. In a previous video, I spoke about the Draconis Memorium series by Anthony Ryan, and he has kind of steamships. That's another level of something of technology, perhaps with industrialization. Transport is a great thing to think about, whether it's flying machines or ships or boats or some kind of mechanized boat. Do you have that within your fantasy world? Who's invented it? Who came up with it? Where did it come from? How long has it been in service? Is it something that's completely new that people are just getting used to for the first time? Because every time a new technology is introduced in our world, it takes a bit of time for people to get used to it. And some there again push back against it. Think about mobile phones now, they're everywhere. Most people that you probably know have one, but you go back only 40 years and they didn't exist. How has society changed with that now? Not just the 24 hour news cycle, but the fact that everybody can be connected at all times. You can look up anything in your, on your phone and find the answer through the internet. You might be watching this video now or listening to it on your phone. That wasn't possible a long time ago. Instant communication around the world. Something like that on a very different level could exist within your fantasy world. Some radical new technology comes in, upsets the entire balance. There are so many different types of technology, whether it's transport, communications, weaponry, it's gonna take a long time to explore. And as ever with this video, the goal is not to provide all of the answers. The goal is to raise lots of questions and get you thinking about this area. What level of technology do you have in your fantasy world? Do you have any? How far does it go? What is the impact on society? And where does it fit with everything else that you've created to create this cohesive fantasy world that feels realistic for the reader? So it's just another element to think about when you're building it. But as ever, don't spend too long building the world. Get on with the writing of it. So that's it for today, but I'll be back soon with another video.